times again. The strut. We're going to get ended right here. So much sound you're traveling. So this is a uh, PlayStation Nation, and I guess we just don't have to bust it. Let's go. Sure. Go ahead. We got Mashie. We got Hoochie. We got Q. We got Boss Pro. And then uh, PlayStation Nation. Game Posh is back. Go ahead. It's me. It's your boy Spudley. It's me. And it's Caveman. And we're going to go punchy. Just abbreviate it. It's a sick way. Is your name? Okay. Don't do it. We'll lose. That's the sultan. Our power. He's ready, dude. He's ready to go. Oh, yeah. So we're recording there? Looks good. Like, I've been shit at guessing everything but the first round. Okay, guys. <laughs> All right, it's time for another game, so everybody quiet down again. Okay, this is the semifinal game. We got Bolt, we got PlayStation Nation. Here we go. Toss up number one. A character in this game thanks a lackey with glasses, a green hat, and a green coat mere moments before decapitating him. One character in this game provides smithing services and rare items in exchange for yellow essences and golden scarabs. Ninja Gaiden. 15 points. <laughs> Welcome to the game. Yeah, yeah right? Let's go, Ninja. Toss up two. A console command that gives all weapons in this game also tosses in a golf club seen in a, in a reception room in its last level. In a level of this game, the player's visor suddenly freezes over as he enters zero gravity. In this game, the TAC cannon undoes the mess caused by the USS Constitution after it launched nukes at the ice sphere. The protagonist of this game, who switches between Amor, Cloak, Strength, and Speed modes on his nano suit, is codenamed Nomad. This game, which finally satisfied the twin desires to kill aliens and North Koreans, inspired a meme in which people bragging about their high-end computers were asked, yeah, but can it run this game? Crisis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the meme question. Yeah. Toss-up three. In one appearance, this, character's this character uses a move called Furious Rush whenever an object that recovers 60% of his stamina is knocked out of his hands. He starts by throwing out back-to-back -back left hooks, then mixes in his frequent, exceptionally powerful uppercuts, and finally, once you run out of hearts, switches to using three consecutive jabs. His theme song quotes the Volga Boatman's song. He is fought between Piston Honda and Bald Bull. This character still says stuff like, I can't drive, so I'm gonna walk all over you. Despite the comical bold... Soda Pabinski. That's right for time. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go through like every character. <laughs> Toss up four. Yeah. An enemy in this game causes confusion or sleep by farting on you. After the coerced revelation that a character is hiding in a rat cellar, this game throws in a large difficulty spike in the slums of Dorder. In this game, a reaction ability known as Hamedo is very useful against monsters like Quecklane, and magic attacks are ineffective if cast by characters with the atheist status. In the final battle of this game, which takes place in the graveyard of airships, Hashmalum casts Meteor to commit suicide, and the party fights the High Seraph Ultima. Its protagonist protects Princess Ovelia and reveals the truth of the Zodiac Stones. For 10 points, Ramza is the protagonist, and... Final Fantasy IV? No, that's my no. Wow. Oh, oh, shoot! Oh, <laughs> oh, I knew it, Ramza dude! I knew it, man. Damn it. And Ibilis is the setting of what turn-based RPG <laughs> published by Square. We got it. Rom's are really Mind games. Games. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Okay. Toss up five. A girl in this series is found sleeping on a haystack after the man who impersonates her gives himself away by pointing out a cute goat emblem. In the third game from this series, the protagonists use, the protagonists use an old watch to cut power to a moving fortress and discover that a futuristic city is really just an underground replica. The protagonists escape from an unmoored Ferris wheel in this series first entry. Uh, no, Professor Layton. Professor Layton. Was it was it Professor Layton. Oh. Oh, okay. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even I didn't even realize. That's my <laughs> I didn't know. Why did the light disappear that fast? 
Alright. If multiple people touch yeah. it. <laughs> Alright. Toss up six. Messing with the game files adds a character named the complete nut to this location. The flute, ocarina, and 12-string guitar masterpiece of Matt Uhlman plays in this location. After you complete the quest that nets you the Ring of Truth, the well in this town reverts to its normal color. Snot Spill steals the sign of this town's Tavern of the Rising Sun, which is managed by Ogden. Nakruel ventures under this town in a second party expansion pack. In a later game, this town can be accessed by touching the Cairn stone Stones in the proper order, enabling you to loot Wirt's Peg Leg and kill the Blacksmith Griswold. Diablo? Minus five. Uh, I'll keep reading. Deckard Kane hangs out the by town? the fountain here. For 10 points, name this doomed town whose cathedral serves as Diablo's base of operations. Literally a PlayStation game. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've watched the speed That's run. Yeah. It's Tristram. It's Tristram. Yeah. 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 Look, if you knew it hit it, dude. <laughs> you knew it hit it. <laughs> I didn't know it. I just knew it was the town. <laughs> I try. I try my best to emphasize like this. This character. This town. Mm. This. I don't, know. I don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll go to toss up seven then. Tornadoes in one part of this game fire in threes and are really easy to avoid. The final stage of the final boss in this game is defeated merely by deflecting his fireballs. A cool part of this game involves firing arrows through torches to burn down trees. Beating the number on the adjacent side converts an AI's card into the double twin card mini game within this game. Locations in this game include the Neuera Mines, the Mana Tree where you fight Zephyros, and the Crystal Cave where Karis joins Clink. Glees are the currency of this game, in which chests unlock shopkeepers, Mode 7, music, and 16-bit graphics. For 10 points, name this charming 2013 pastiche of an action RPG, which showcases the evolution of the... Yeah, evolution of the RPG. Yes. Okay. Toss up eight. A Krogoth assists you in one mission in this game named Time to Leave, in which you must protect the implosion device. Artillery shells in this game travel different distances depending on the gravity of the planet or moon. While being built, the Dragon's Tooth counts toward this game's 200 unit limit. This was the first major game in its genre to feature a constant rate of resource accumulation. Destroyed buildings in this game, known as wrecks, can be salvaged for a lump sum of metal. This game features a struggle for galactic supremacy between the transhumanist core and the rebel arm. For 10 points, name is RTS, made by Cave Dog Entertainment, best known for being the spiritual predecessor to Supreme Commander. I didn't know it either. Total Annihilation. Oh. Alright. Okay. Yeah, we did. Everybody got totally annihilated. Toss up nine. In a game named for this character, the theft of the priceless Eye of Infinity Jewel leads him to encounter the gold tie wearing kingpin. In another game, this character prevents his friend's death by turning the clock back six minutes. This character is abducted from his apartment by an unknown thief who is revealed to be Angela Cross. In another game, this character hacks into the ion cannon to destroy the bio-obliterator and takes Courtney to his trailer. Ratchet. No, it's minus five. Uh, I'll keep reading. Uh, and takes Courtney to his trailer so that she can appear in his namesake secret agent film series. In his first appearance, this native of Kortu seeks Captain Quark and befriends a Lombax with whom he eventually defeats Chairman Drek. For 10 points, name this defective green-eyed sentry bot the buddy of Ratchet. Clank. That's rough. Toss up 10. <coughs> the lights in one of these locations continuously flicker because there's a room with several toasters plugged in. While in one of these places, you might accidentally collect coins with thick eyebrows, known as evil coins. Another of these places is accessed by climbing a magic vine, since it's up in the clouds, and is blown away by a giant fan after being beaten. In the last of them, you fight Iggy in a Bowser costume. Uh, Bowser's Koopa Hotels. From the, what does he call them? It's Hotel Mario. Yeah, that's I mean, they're, looking, yeah. they're looking for a hotel, so yeah. You yeah. What's well, your problem? Too many toasters. Yeah. I should have I should have buzzed in immediately. But. That was toss up ten. Okay, we're halfway done. Toss up eleven. He's gone. All right, toss up eleven. A flechette launching unit in the arsenal of this organization can be killed by ramming it with the muscle car full speed. This organization frequently uses memory replacement to train new soldiers. Your progress in the game is impeded until you throw away a can tossed onto the floor by one member of this organization. 
The Magnuson device was invented specifically to combat this organization's pesky striders. They imposed the suppression field inhibiting reproduction soon after winning the seven hour war. Wallace. The Combine. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Thank, thank God. <laughs> Half Life 2. Not on PlayStation. I was on Bush Street. Yes, it is. Oh, it's not. PlayStation 2. Is it? Yes, the first one is. Toss up 12. In one game for this console, weapons are upgraded by dipping weapon seeds in droplets of water left by vanquished enemies. In a series for this console, the protagonist works with his rival Ginger to rescue the singing doll princess Chelsea. The main character is assisted by baby, adolescent, or adult dinosaurs in another game for this console, whose exclusive releases include Linkle Liver, Linkle Liver Story and both Clockwork Night games. You got you got hurt. Go He's, for it. You got hurt. What's what's the answer? Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was good for 15, by the way. Maybe we need to separate them. Well, we might actually need it eventually. Can I trade? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm taking the piss right now. No, 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 we're fine. We're fine. All right. All right, toss up 13. Don't kill your teammates. Like <laughs> a book in this game describes the shadow of a cross seen on the ground during Lord Boliskine's voyage to New England. In this game, it's a good idea to conserve, conserve revolver bullets because they are waterproof. The smoke from a lit cigar fills up a room in this game, draining the player's energy with prolonged exposure. The protagonist of this game tosses an oil lamp at a tree to vanquish the pirate Ezekiel Pregst. You may either play this game as a private eye searching for a piano in a loft, or as the niece of a man who committed suicide by hanging. Oh, in the dark? Yep. Toss up 14. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Toss up 14. A vignette at the end of the latest game in this series shows a major character manning a checkout counter at a supermarket. The second game in this series focuses on the Lucinda file, which is guarded by Rodinsky, the president of St. Logic. A villain in this series survived third-degree burns as a child, enabling her to conceal her gender and moonlight as the assassin Le Clown. One game in this series shipped with a folding cardboard box that slid over the PSP, known as the Solid Eye. The first game in this series is set in Lobito Island. Metal Gear Acid? Yeah, that's right. Nice. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I was like, I think I know this one. <laughs> Toss up 15. <laughs> Toss up 15. The plot of this game is advanced by moving a flower pot to a windowsill. The protagonist of this game uses a wallet on a prostitute and receives syphilis. <laughs> you can shoot spaceships and astronauts in a minigame accessed by traveling to the sewers and accepting an LSD pill from Timothy Leary. <coughs> Colbert Report staff writer Sam Kim conceived this game as a sequel to Shadowgate. Near the end of this game, the protagonist exhumes the skeleton of checkers and uses it on an ID scanner to gain access to the White House, where he defeats H.R. Haldeman and then, in a tribute to Punch-Out, Richard Nixon. For 10 points, name this 2013 masterpiece, a retro point-and-click adventure in which you play as Bob Woodward as he investigates the title Scandal. Watergate. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just, just named like every person involved in Watergate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Toss up 16. You must reset this game if you get stuck in the wall while exploiting a glitch in which you mash up and A after a door closes on you. A week. Metroid. 15. Yeah. <laughs> Toss up 17. Here we go. Toss up 17. One character in this game is mocked for wearing a towel as a headband in a spa. In this game, a refined flight stone is needed to surmount the fireworks and whirlpools blocking access to an island named for the game's publisher. It's not a video game adaptation of Richard Mason's Facebook, but the protagonist of this game tries to use hyper-resonance to clear up poisonous miasma. This game introduces a system whereby arts of the same element power power each other up through the fields of phenons. It begins with... Tales of the Abyss. That is correct for 10. Yes. <laughs> it begins with Yulia Yue reading the score. Yulia <laughs> Yue. There we go. That's why he is. 10 yeah. points for, that was Q that bust in, right? Yeah. yeah. Toss up 18. Right. An animal of this kind ascends a pyramid with periodically falling boulders in a game ending with the levels Haunted House and Wind Up. Another of them is introduced in a level that follows the boss battle against Very Naughty, known as his namesake Walkway but is replaced with the snake rattly in a different game. Winky. Uh, minus five. I'll finish the question. 
Uh, these animals escape a pinwheel in Clinger Wingers and ride a hover bike in the frustrating Turbo Tunnel. Oh. Toads. Yeah. Toads, uh, frogs, take it was the, yeah, uh, sure. I would have said Winky. Okay. Toss up 19. We have two more. This company developed a game that includes a, a badass race around a set of sky, skyscrapers on hoverboard. Dr. Tan's estate is the last unlockable location in another game by this developer. This company worked with Traveler's Tales on a Lego game in which studs are lost and failure not experienced for poor performance. They developed the game Antigrav for the eye toy, as well as the complementary games Amplitude and Frequency. Harmonics? Yeah, that's right, for 10 points. Nice. Last question, toss of 20. An exploit in this game allows you to remain invincible in the spot where you drop the scare monster scroll. Despite its claim to fame, this game was actually released two years after Beneath Apple Manor. The 26 enemy times, 26 enemy times in this game, each represent by a, represented by a single letter, range from aquators to zombies. Once you acquire the amulet of Yendor in this game, you have to go back up through a completely different set of levels. This game was originally co-written at UC Santa Cruz by future Unix and Java wonderkind Ken Arnold. For 10 points, name this 1980 dungeon crawler, which popularized a namesake genre of procedurally generated games. That's Gucci. NetHack? Minus five. What? I know which one it is. Like Adam, Dwarf Fortress, and NetHack. <laughs> <laughs> That's right for ten. Uh, <laughs> I took a fifty-fifty. We got a ton of minuses. All right, yeah. let's check it out. I helped out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 55 for 105. Holy shit. You guys have 15, 25 down to 15, 10, 20, 30, 40 down to 35. It is 105 to 65. Pretty close game. You guys, you guys better win pixels. Okay? Yeah, dude, give me that. No way. Do it for me. I saw that in theater. Now, the worst part if they win pixels, I'm rooming with them, so I have to watch. Well, tonight, every night. All right, new teams will rotate in. You guys already know who you are, so. Yep. Let me stop the recording here. Thank <laughs> you.